This is the new level one set. Thanks, Steve. We need to connect it to another building that is far away with very high speed. Okay, it's not super far away. You can kind of see the roof of that building from the roof of this building. And my good friends at Ingenious decided to hook me up with not one, but two outdoor directional access points designed specifically for network to network connections. Let's take a closer look. Inside each one of these boxes is an IP67, that means weather sealed, outdoor access point. It's a two by two, five gigahertz solution with a built-in 18 dBi panel antenna. These will operate at up to two gigabit wirelessly, and it can be point to multi-point, but basically I'm gonna use it as a point to point network to connect this building to another building line of sight. Five gigahertz, two five gigahertz channels, so a little over two gigabit total bandwidth possible in an ideal scenario. Ingenious outdoor access point. You have a quick start guide and management tools. A lot of these are cloud managed, so, okay. You got a bracket set, an ethernet cable, a PLE adapter, and a grounding wire. It even comes with special crimpable RJ45 ends that are shielded, and this is part of the built-in 6,000 volt surge suppression, because outside, even a nearby lightning strike can be a lot of induced current. These are built to deal with that. And there we go, there's the access point with a built-in panel antenna. Now you can add external antennas, that's what these things are down here are for. It has a two and a half gig LAN port that's PoE 48 volts, and then it has a one gig LAN port out that's PoE plus. That's really handy because you can just run power to this thing, and while this is your point-to-point -point access point, it can be connected to another access point that provides other different coverage. This is really a five gigahertz backhaul. It does technically have a 2.4 gigahertz built-in management network that you can connect to from the mobile app, but we'll cover more of that in a second. And then you got a pretty standard Visa style mount on the back, but that's really meant for their mounting solution. And their mounting solution does support multiple angles as well. So you screw this to a pipe and then you can point it up or down to get better connectivity. Uh, the app also has some features like GPS coordinates and line of sight estimation, and it'll help you point it exactly the right way and tune it to get the best possible signal. And then on the other side, I've got another similar model. This is the EOC 655C18. Let's, uh, the power supply it comes with is 48 volts, one amp. So if you're dealing with the legacy PoE network that doesn't have quite enough power, you can use this, but I would recommend that you only use this indoors. That is an exceptionally nice mounting solution. Now, sometimes you get these things and they're outdoor rated, but then you look into the specifications and it's, oh, wait a minute, in direct sunlight inside this cabinet, it's gonna be quite toasty. So be sure to check out the operating parameters. And if you look at the operating parameters of this, up to 148 degrees Fahrenheit, yeah, you, you would need that in direct sunlight. Sometimes it still pays to add a little bit of a sunshade just to keep everything running a little bit more reliably. We've got our weatherized connections for our Cat6 connection everything that you need to crimp it and get it all put together. Everything you need right in the box, including the grounding screws, pipe strap, everything. It's fantastic. All right, let's take a look at our sights and get this thing put together. So on the roof, here's the fish rod. It comes all the way down through the ceiling. Yeah, th there's a hole in the ceiling. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's actually an old gas vent. There used to be a gas heat in here and the exhaust went through there. And so this is actually water damage. So it looks like I just drilled through into a finished room, but actually it was already pre-existing water damage. I'm just reusing to uh, fish some cat six. And so I didn't have to go into the attic, which is only about a four foot, five foot ceiling in this part of the attic. So that's exciting that I just can tape the wire to the fish rod and then pull it up from the attic and then boom, 10 gigabits on the roof just with copper. Neat.
So I've got line of sight out that window. Basically, I'm gonna open the window, go on the roof, mount the access point. It's not really an access point. It's a point-to-point -point connection. And then hopefully I will have multi-gigabit sub five millisecond network access over here. But don't know until we try, so let's give it a try. So that piece being out actually, uh... Yeah, it actually it worked, out. worked out. Somebody set me up for success a hundred years ago. <laughs> well, that should work it out. Well, in that case, I'll be a little bit longer clip then. Boom. Uh, but this is testing the ingenious connection before we even point it or do anything special with it. Basically, 500 megabits at a quarter mile. Changing the channel width to uh, 160 megahertz, and it's like blam. Even though the signal level isn't great, now we're at 800 megabit. Oh, and I also change the frequency because you never know. You never know. That's 10 megabytes per second. That's pretty daggone good for a quarter of a mile. I have to avoid the temptation here to do like a full suite stack of documentation on exactly how to set up your point to point or point to multi point ingenious configuration, but this is the web GUI that you get. Now, you, you can manage these from the cloud, but you can also manage these from the SkyConnect mobile app, or you can manage these from a web browser. And it basically gives you the, the functionality. You can also manage it from the command line, and the API is automatable, and there doesn't seem to be a lot of restrictions or like cryptographic lockout or anything like that. So when you pick one of these up, it has a management network with a default password, which you have to change to keep the system secure. So on the 2.4 gigahertz band, local to each access point, you can just connect directly to the access point. And if you use the Sky Connect app, you can see the access point in the local network. Heck, if, you know, depending on how close your other access point is, you may be able to hop on to the other access point if you have physical line of sight to it on the 2.4 gigahertz range. My setup here, which is measured at 0.25 miles, is uh, just on the edge of having a stable connection to the 2.4 gigahertz on the remote access point, even though I have line of sight. Now, I know in the B-roll, I was inside behind a glass, which attenuates the signal, but in the final setup, it's actually bolted to the outside of the building. That was just for, for testing in an, an initial setup. So on the wireless side, in the wireless configuration, it is as you would expect. You have two radios plus the 2.4 gigahertz radio, which is really just for your local management network. So don't even think about the 2.4 gigahertz side of thing. And it can be point to point or po point to multi-point. BSU, you can, you can choose it to be a base station or you can have it be an access point client. Um, you can also set up a different VLAN for your management network as well. So not just the 2.4 gigahertz, but you can also have a separate management VLAN. You can configure the channel. It will automatically configure the least congested channel. It does a reasonable job at that, it seems. And you can also configure the bandwidth. And so I've set mine to 160 megahertz so that I've got the full spread of uh, possible availability. You can also use link statistics in the site survey in order to survey your site and see what you're up against in terms of uh, the different radio stuff. The web GUI here is perfectly functional and serviceable, but it is a little clunky. So like in the site survey thing, you explicitly will have to pick each frequency band. You can't just say, hey, give me a site survey across all the frequencies. It will not do that, but it does do that in the background. So if you use the the actual uh, client software, which is um, Ingenious SkyPoint, you can deploy that on site. The way that Ingenious lets you do that is you download a full virtual machine, and it'll run on, you know, say Ubuntu. And this is really designed to connect to an entire fleet. So if you're going to be a wireless ISP and you're going to build a mesh of these around your small town. Uh, every access point could have multiple routes to every other access point. This software will let you set that up and it will give you a map and show you where each access point is and will even assist you with pointing the access points and doing all of that. That is the strength of this platform. If you just need to do uh, a connection for like point to multi-point, then maybe a 60 gigahertz setup would be easier and more appropriate. But if you're building a wireless ISP and you're going to use these as the backhaul, this is really slick.
Another really cool feature is something they call the dying gasp. So this thing will power itself for an extra few seconds after you yank the PoE and can notify neighboring access points that, hey, I have just lost power. I'll see you guys later. Which is amazing because you can chain that and get an alert off of that. You don't have to wait for the access point to stop responding. You can be notified immediately like, hey, it was five minutes ago since we saw Bob. Oh, Bob literally said I'm losing power you know five minutes sooner, which is maybe nice from a quality of service standpoint. Even though the site survey feature maybe is not as full featured as I would like, it also has a spectrum analyzer. The difference here is that a lot of things could be on the five gigahertz band that would not necessarily be recognized as a network. So just because there's not a five gigahertz network that is detected in the site survey doesn't mean that those frequencies aren't being used by something else. The spectrum analyzer here will help you get to the root of those kinds of problems. I tried some different radio configurations, including, uh, <clears throat> uh also had a lot of fun trying different radio configurations. So like the point to point, multi-point with dual radio, if so you can kind of create this thing, imagine like a lattice or ladder where you've got two or three access points that are in that 15 degree signal cone and they're pointed so that each access point can see every other access point. Like, does this actually work as a valid way to build a mesh and the packets will actually get there even if one of the connections between one of the access points is down? And the answer is yeah, that actually works really well. That's a really clever way to do the whole dual radio thing. Now, if out of the box you just want dual radio connections, which means that you have multiple frequencies uh, which your two different sites are connected across for resiliency or packet loss reasons or whatever, um, these will do that, which is awesome. You can tell, though, that really Ingenious expects you to mostly use the SkyPoint network management software and to not have to really faff around with the built-in uh, GUI or the built-in management network. But you should be aware of it because you will have to take steps to secure it, disable it, set up a management VLAN, something along that line. But it is nice for field service technicians to be able to just roll up to a tower or roll up to, to a physical access point and hop on a local 2.4 gigahertz management network, assuming that you've secured it appropriately. Okay, so it's been over three weeks of continuous use with this setup. What's the verdict? I'm actually kind of shocked. It's stable. And not only is it stable, running ping, like sending a ping packet every half a second, it hasn't lost a single ping packet. This is a two by two radio setup that has quality of service, but it has shockingly good quality of service. Now, the worst jitter that has been seen in three weeks was 18 milliseconds, but there were only four of those. Most of the jitter is around three and a half milliseconds, 3.287 milliseconds actually to be precise, but it's called three and a half. This is because, I mean, if you look at the physical hardware, there's an 18 dBi panel antenna built in, and you can use other antennas. It's, you know, the range here, they say, is up to uh, 10 miles. Yeah, 10 miles per their specification. But with this setup, I'm getting basically the full 2 gigabit all the time. Occasionally, I have 1.5 gigabit, but mostly I'm getting the full 2 gigabit all the time with very, very little jitter for a radio link, which is very impressive. But then on the other hand, I'm kind of like four wireless ISPs and people that are doing point to multi-point deployment because this can be point to up to 16 other points. There can be 16 clients. $1,400, give or take, at the time that I'm doing this video. I don't know. It seems kind of pricey for other pieces of equipment now that have come out that are sub $200 that provide similar functionality. And so I think that I should do a roundup and a comparison because it's not really like when you peel back and when you use other point to point equipment, not even point to multi-point uh, that operate on different radio frequencies. Those are really different products. They're more line of sight and they don't have the same quality of service features. They don't really have the same apples to apples features. This is the kind of thing that you might do for a backhaul for a wireless ISP, and this being outdoor IP rated, included pole mount, would run to you know a distribution thing, and maybe you might provide wireless access to a bunch of local buildings, and then this one is the long haul that goes to the next 
group of access points that's five miles away or something like that. I really would like to get some other different equipment and do a longer spec apples to apples. So if you're watching this video in the future, go look on the level one forums or look for other videos in a wireless playlist to see sort of what we come up with. This device is kind of unique for where it is and it might represent a transition sort of device because six months a year ago, there was no $250 point to point option short of flashing like open WRT on some device. And that was, I've never had a five nines experience with that. Whereas this has been a five nines experience the whole way. And that's not even something that I've experienced on other modern equipment. That's, you know, less than $750 per unit per piece. So Bottom line, I'm shocked that the reliability is as good as it is. They aren't kidding with the quality of service and the two by two radio where it, it's like, it'll, we'll use the other radio and the other frequency. So we don't have to wait on the frequency hop. If the frequency becomes congested or there's transient interference, that's a real thing. This thing performs incredibly well under very adverse conditions in a way that I haven't seen from competing devices, which probably just means that I need to get more competing devices and take a closer look. But Ingenious has done a really nice job putting this together. To say nothing of their network management software for managing a whole fleet of these, half a dozen, a dozen, two dozen of these in your deployment, that could also be worth the price of admission. This is not meant for a setup where you just have two buildings that are connected. This is built for building a whole mesh, basically. And that makes me think, what sort of fun other things could we do in terms of building a mesh? Because these things will tolerate imperfect line of sight, whereas other devices that are point to point or point to multi-point uh, really do not tolerate imperfect line of sight at all. These are great. So I don't know, I have more work to do, I think. And if you'd like to see me test some specific scenario with this hardware, hit me up in the comments or more likely that I'll see it on the level one forums. I, uh, I'm intrigued. All right, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.